All right, David, thanks for joining me. It's been great to work with you. Uh, it's been great to work with Drew. It's a wonderful school. I've been there several times and uh, just love the community. Uh, but just to start with, we'd love to hear a little bit about your background, um, who you are as a leader and how you came to this uh, wonderful school. Perfect. Thanks so much, Gabe. And it's a pleasure working with you as well. Um, <clears throat> so how I came to, to Drew, um, I have like kind of a complex background. Um, I, I'm originally from Argentina, um, but I was born in Holland, lived there for a year, um, lived in Argentina till I was 10, Hong Kong till I was 18, came to college in the States and then worked for about uh, two years in business consulting before I kind of st stumbled into teaching. Um, I wasn't probably the best student um, in high school and never for a million years imagined that I'd end up in education. But um, I think there was something that spoke to me about being there for teenagers at a moment where I think I would have needed an adult to be there for me and, and just the real possibility of this amazing stage of a person's life, which is the teenage years. And really thinking about a school, I think that um, has its focus specifically on centering everything around the students um, is what drew me to Drew. Um, what, what really brought me here is, is, is a school that is first and foremost committed to its students. Uh, that's terrific. And I feel like uh, in getting to know some of the students and the families, um, they themselves have such a diverse uh, set of backgrounds and uh, Drew really represents a, a melting pot of ideas and is not try, sort of trying to create you know, one track uh, for everybody. Talk more about sort of the philosophy of education and your right. philosophy and how that all intersects into delivering a great experience for uh, the students at Drew. Absolutely. Um, that's a great question. I think our, our um, mission really is about empowering students to find their voice. Um, and when we talk about voice at Drew, we don't talk about, you know, the capacity to speak louder than someone else. Um, what we want is for our graduates to really emerge with clarity about who they are, um, what they're passionate about, um, what their kind of moral compass is, um, what their vocation is. And, and we, we feel that it's the greatest gift that you can give to a student. If you can really empower them to have that compass, that they're going to carry that, that with the rest, uh, for the rest of their lives. Um, and it will always be able to turn internally in terms of where they want to go. Um, and I think that's our philosophy, right, is we, you know, when, when parents ask me, like, what kind of ki kid um, is going to do well at Drew or going to be admitted at Drew? And for me, I always go back to the parents and I say, it's really about you. You know, we are, we are not a school that engineers students. We're not a school that um, has a prescriptive approach to what kids should do, to what college they should go to, to what success means. Um, we find our job to be to really create an environment that is perfectly suited to the teenage years, um, that's really kind of inquiry-based, um, and that really empowers them to become active agents in their education and in their lives. Uh, and, you know, if, if help, uh, help me help somebody who's exploring Drew for the first time kind of imagine themselves walking through the, the hallways and, and the building. That's a very unique uh, facility. It's, it's such a just a great uh, campus that has like a lot of, you know, uh, opportunities for for different learning experiences. Uh, you're in the heart of, of San Francisco. Uh, you know, it's a it's a smaller campus. So it's like, you know, everybody knows folks. But tell tell me a bit more about sort of you know, for a CFO uh, who's never sort of been to Drew, what they would expect if they walked the halls and, uh, and just uh, explored the school. Absolutely. Um, so we, we like to think of it as like a very cozy urban campus, very urban campus. So uh, for those people that are not from San Francisco, it's in Pacific Heights. It's in an amazing neighborhood where we have within whatever, three or four blocks, um, consulates, restaurants, all kinds of things. Um, our building is very modern, actually. It, it, it it's, but it's, it's, it's understated, I think, in a way that the school is and, and our students are. If you were to walk outside, I'm not sure you would realize what's behind the walls. And then once you walk in through those doors, it's a very beautiful um, building with lots of light. And I think the feeling that you get at Drew um, is that it's a real community. And I know that a lot of private schools talk about being communities, but I think at Drew, really, it is like that. Um, it's a school that uh, doesn't really have social cliques. You don't see like the theater kids and the sports kids and stuff like that. There's a real integration. I think there's space um, and a real understanding that, you know, identity is more complex and a simple association with it, with, with an activity that you do. Um, and there's a real community of care here. It's, 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 cool to be smart, um, but it's even cooler to be caring. And I think it's, it's a community that we're, we're really, um, students are empowered to own 
belonging to own community, um, to take responsibility for it. And you feel that when you walk in um, to Drew. Uh, you know, I felt that certainly the, the feeling of care from uh, all uh, sort of adults and all departments when we came there and, and the business office and the finance and operations office are no exception. Uh, uh, and, and can you give, give a little uh, sort of window into how uh, finance and operations plays a direct impact on what's happening in the classroom, the culture of the school and the alignment of you know, it's not just like academics versus non-academics, but it is this sort of integrated approach to yeah. supporting the learning experience. Absolutely. I mean, I think the, the previous school that I was at was a K-12 school um, with multiple campuses and the business office was totally withdrawn from the life of the school. Um, and it was a place that was peaceful. And sometimes when I needed to chill out, I would go there, um, but that's not the case at all. You know, our CFO's office and our business office is in the middle of our campus and, you know, in between classes. Um, and I think one of the things that I know our CFO has enjoyed tremendously is really opening the door and just hearing kids interacting. Um, the impact of what a CFO does at Drew is not an abstract thing. It's, it's something that as you walk through here, you see every day, you see um, all aspects of that. Um, and I think we really try to think of ourselves, especially I think because I put such an emphasis on the development of a cohesive leadership team, um, where what I want is for that strategic leadership team to really be um, my brain trust in terms of all aspects of the school. And we work with coaches and things to really build like multiple perspectives that we're not siloed in, in our approach to Drew and we're all mission driven. We all have students at the forefront of what we do. Um, and obviously then it has to do with providing the facilities. Um, I think budgeting in a way that really responds to mission and priorities um, to really make sure that we're all holding ourselves accountable to um, our philosophy and what we do for kids. Let's talk about those uh, priorities. Uh, I haven't talked to you and your board. I can tell there's some exciting things on the horizon. Uh, you have some new roles at the school that are, are there, um, uh, including a new assistant head of school who is outstanding and dynamic and visionary in her own way. Uh, wow. Where do you see the school headed? What's, what's part of your vision? And most importantly, how can a, a CFO uh, support all that? What role will they play um, in the future next chapter of, of Drew? Absolutely. Um, we're at a very exciting moment at Drew. Uh, so this is my seventh year as head of school. Um, my predecessor, Sam Cutterback, who you know um, built this amazing school, was here for 25 years. So I think it was quite a transition for the school. Um, and obviously the pandemic presented its unique set of circumstances. But I think, um, like I said, my, my focus has really been on kind of clarifying our mission, values, and philosophy, and really building systems um, to, to make sure that we are aligning our practice and every aspect of the organization to that. Um, so it's been a lot of under the hood stuff. I think we're now at the moment where, you know, we're on the verge of finalizing our strategic plan, which I think then is like, all right, we've cleaned up under the hood, like let's paint the car and let's drive it somewhere. Um, and for me, uh, I, I'm really looking to, to be, you know, on the cutting edge of education at Drew. I think we're a school that um, has never thought of kind of, you know, one size fits all for students. Um, so I think that's a philosophy that should speak to most people in terms of empowering kids to become who they are. But also I think in terms of 21st century education to really equip kids with a different type of education to be successful. Um, we have some really exciting ideas. We have a new assistant um, head of school for academics who's um, come from Head Roy School and really bringing a wealth of experience to kind of the innovative ambitions of our, our, of our program. We have an amazing Dean of Students who's built a real sense of community and spirit at Drew. Um, and we have a new uh, Director of Operations who's fantastic. So I think it, the table's really set um, to go to very exciting places. And I think for me, the CFO is going to play a fundamental role. CFO, um, I see the CFO as, as almost, you know, the the person in the car driving next to me, really helping me as a real partner in terms of the strategic direction of the school, um, how to employ our resources, you know, writ large um, in, 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 in pursuit of our mission and our ambitions, um, and just someone that can help work with the board um, to really, you know, usher Drew into to this next exciting stage. You mentioned that metaphor of driving next to you, and, you know, anytime you take a a vacation or a trip with somebody, it's good to know you've got a good friend and a good partner and know a little bit about them. Uh, your background to me is so fascinating and you have such a worldly international perspective. Uh, give folks who don't know you a little more of an insight into kind of, you know, just 
uh, your your perspective on the world and how that has shaped you as a leader and you know the the different cultures that you've been a part of and how that has an influence on on your style of leadership. Absolutely. I mean, I think um, you know the the diverse experiences that I've had. Um, and the, the, I think I'm a, I'm a third culture kid, right? So if I were to speak in Spanish, I would be Argentine. I, I'm, I'm American also. I've lived in Hong Kong. I, I used to speak Chinese pretty well. Um, I, I think, you know, it, there's a reason why I chose San Francisco. I think San Francisco is the nucleus of, of those three identities of mine. In a sense, it's American, it's Asian, it's Latin American, and it's this very vibrant, innovative city. Um, I think in San Francisco, what you have that's different to most other private school markets is a parent community that can afford private schools um, that works in industries where innovation has been the key. So they are open actually to a new way of doing things. I don't know, I think for me, because I've moved around so much, like I'm not one of those people that's just bound to tradition and there's like a certain way of doing things. For me, we should do things the best way that we need to do them to meet the demands of our time and to empower students and do right by them. Um, and I think for me, I'm, I'm, I'm very much motivated by a diverse, vibrant community where we're, um, you know, we're gathering people from all over the, the world if we can, um, and, and, and helping each one of them kind of assert their identity in a, in a really multi kind of cultural um, and ethnic environment. So. Uh, final question, and just a sort of ties to an observation in terms of the diversity of your board too. It's an amazing board that I've come to, to get to know. Uh, and you know, a CFO often works very closely just give a little sense, because I mean, I, I, the, the parents and, and the trustees that I've talked to um, are just very thoughtful about their philosophy of education and why Drew and uh, just have such um, really good insights into what the school is about and where it's headed. Uh, maybe just talk a little bit about, you know, what this person could expect as they begin to develop some partnerships at the board level. Absolutely. I, I think um, the, the, this person is going to be very well served by what I think is an incredibly talented, professional, um, accomplished board um, in each in their areas, and especially like in our finance committee. Um, you know, people that have founded companies, people that have really established themselves in, in very clear ways. Um, and I think different to other schools, you know, it's it's they they're here because they believe in our mission and they believe in what we do for students, and they can speak compellingly at what that about, about how we have understood their student and how we've supported their student. Um, you know, the impact of education in terms of a board is, is directly on their children. Um, so we have that deep passion um, and very professional kind of approach that's, I think, going to create a very fertile ground for, for someone to help uh, lead that committee and lead, lead, help lead those conversations. Well, this has been a great conversation here. I'll just say muchas gracias. I'll say sia sia. And of course, thank you. Uh, and it's been a pleasure uh, working with you so far. And we look forward to continuing this search. So thanks so much for spending some time here, David. Um, muchas gracias. Sia, sia. And it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Gabe. Thank you.